there's a lot you can do in this town You set it up and turn it around We might have come from somewhere else But this is where we found ourselves Welcome to the local show People you work with, people you know Welcome to another edition of The Local Show here on Grassroots Community Network. I'm Eric Scarvin, your host, guys. Thanks for joining us this week. So excited to have one of my competitive buddies. We've been racing a few years now, and he's the race director of the Mother of All Sentients, which actually kicks off today on Fat Tuesday. It's Andrew Bilecki in The Local Show House. Welcome, buddy. Nice to, nice to see you, Eric. It's, you know, great it's to always see you. a pleasure. I love seeing your smile. You, you have so much energy. You just you get me charged up to do what I do. <laughs> well, man, it's it's like like the energy just feeds upon itself because we we have so many similarities and you know our energy, our athletic background, uh, race directing. I was fortunate to have a canine uphill for 21 years. You're coming up on 31 years with the mother of all ascensions. Yeah which we'll talk a lot about today. But I want to talk about kind of what the backstory. Like, um, you've been a competitive athlete for how many years now? Like, you've been competing for decades, right? Since, since the 80s, I think. Yeah, I was same. doing triathlons back in the 80s in Hawaii. Okay. And, and then uh, I moved to Aspen in 92, and I started snowshoe racing because snowshoeing had just exploded back then. And uh, I thought, okay, I'm going to spend a, a year in Aspen and, and – ski and snowboard and do all the stuff I wanted to do and then I was going to go back to Hawaii but I started putting on events I, I started you know going to snowshoe races and doing really well and I got sponsorship and that led from one thing to another thing and and here I am we, <laughs> so you had done you had done triathlon ultra running like ultra what running. was your longest race that uh, you 37 did? miles there, there's wow. an event in Hawaii that goes from sea level to 10,000 feet it runs up Haleakala it's called run to the sun Oh my gosh! Yeah, it was a great. Is that event. the hardest yeah. thing that you think you'd ever done as well? Yeah, I think that if might have been one. Back? Of, well, I did Cocapelli Super Marathon in '92, okay. and that's a hundred miles in four days. So it's wow. uh, a marathon every day. So it goes from Grand Junction Whoa. to Moab, and I, I, a lot of this was in '92. I think I did three of the world's toughest marathons in a month. I did Pikes Peak, uh, Volcanoes Marathon in Oregon, and Volcanoes uh, Marathon in uh, Crater Lake marathon in Oregon and volcanoes marathon in Hawaii. So what uh, was a, I mean, and these are not just events. These are long events, long mm -hmm. endurance events. Like what was, what's up with that? Like what, what was the main attraction and what know. was your main kind of benefit I, from, from those types I just, of events? I liked being a runner. I was asthmatic <laughs> when I was a kid. I always wanted to be an athlete, you know, and I was in the high school band and I was, you know, studying music and, you know, couldn't play on the b basketball or the, the hockey team or the softball to baseball team. And, and I just started running back in high school a couple miles. And I don't know if playing the saxophone helped my lungs and, you know, <laughs> built something lung strength up and swimming and doing that. And, and next thing you know, I was, I was doing well in 10Ks and I started reaching out for sponsorship. And I was, you know, I was like, hey, I can be an athlete, you know. And the journey, too. You like um, both you and I had done the World Snowshoe Championships up Mount Albert. Albert yeah. So that wasn't only up Albert. It was all the way up and over yeah. and down Albert. God, that was That's <laughs> a big thing. And I know that the journey, and that, that race, we could talk about the rest of the show. I mean, we had like guys like mountaineers up there making igloos at the aid station at the summit at 14,400 feet in the middle of winter. I mean, that race was unbelievable. But for me, I speak to this, the journey, right? Being out there and training all day. The lead up to these events, right? That's a big part of it, isn't it? Yeah, you're doing out there. It's part of your life. You're doing it every day. You know, yeah. I th it, you're addicted to it, really. You know, when yeah. I moved um, from Hawaii to Aspen, a good friend of mine, Jay, Jay Maggots, and I, we, we were living together, and we'd go running every, every night. You know, I, I'd run in the morning. I was probably running twice a day back then. Doing, I was doing 100 miles a week. We would do like a 22 mile run on a Saturday or Sunday. Um, I just remember being out there and it, you get hooked and you get yeah. so high doing it. Like you get supercharged doing it. Anybody, no doubt about people it. People in this valley know what this is well, all about. Well, you get the, yeah. like the endorphin rush. You get the dopamine release. You get this incredible natural high that's on top of all that. Being in nature, being in the mountains all day for me is just 
what it's all about. Mm -hmm. And so the training requirement being out there is really desirable. The races themselves are kind of the cherry on top. One other thing I wanted to touch on before we go to break, you had organized and run in actually the extreme heat race which we have an image of you running around your snowshoes with like lycra shorts on or something. Yeah, yeah. So Talk about extreme day. heat. That was an incredible concept. Um, yeah, I think that after the first year I did the snowshoe races up here that I was running, I was driving down to see a friend in um, New Mexico in Santa Fe, and I went by the sand dunes. And I went, wow, my brain was just, <laughs> right. I think I could do a, a <laughs> I, I love creative projects or whatever. I, I think I can do a, a snowshoe race on the sand dunes and we could have best sci-fi attire, you know, make it like a road, road, road warrior, warrior kind of thing. You know? <laughs> Arabic. Yeah, yeah. And that's what it dancer. was in those, in those beginning years. It, w it was like that. We ran it, I ran it for five years and, you know, then the, the park service, I got into some hot water over from the park service and you know no pun intended just, yeah yeah you know desert like <laughs> yeah, yeah. setting there in the sand dunes. extreme heat it ended, it ended up being extreme extreme heat. political it, heat yeah, for for me <laughs> but lucky you know but uh, that race dude yeah. that shows to your creativity your character that was so much fun and then we would camp out that night in the great sand dunes national yeah. so there was like this big party all night that went all night long that yeah. was such an epic race to go down and i did that a couple times there was a uh, Joel, Joel Scott and Jeff Scott. Uh, yep. Jeff Scott works with a company called Night Eyes, and th he developed a prototype frisbee, a glow in the dark frisbee that Night Eyes wow. now pr produces. But he started that, and I remember when we were down doing those events, we'd be out in the dunes at night throwing that frisbee around, and <laughs> it was surreal. You know, it was just a really magical Gosh. time. You know, yeah. we set up a big dome tent down there one time, and the Rangers came down. Because it was lit up, it looked like a spa like the moon had landed <laughs> What's on. What's going on, on with this UFO? Yeah, here? yeah. And they knew we were there, and they said it was okay. But people in the campground were what's because that's a UFO hot, hot spot down right. there. You know, there's I've seen a few things. A little bit of concern it, there. Yeah, <laughs> like what, what are, what's going on <laughs> over there? What's happening? <laughs> we're gonna take a quick break, buddy. Rehydrate. Okay. Oh yeah. Maybe even yeah. have some. Well. We'll talk well, about that. I don't that. know if that's rehydration. Yeah, know, that's they... dehydration. <laughs> if we're going to have some marble distillery. But it's damn good, Eric. We're going to talk about some of your major yeah. sponsors. Yeah. So, guys, Mother of All Ascension kicked off today on Fat Tuesday. It's going on throughout the week. So we're going to get you up to speed on that, literally, and so much more. We're going to go to our one break of the show. I want to thank our winter underwriters. We've got the Aspen Square, City of Aspen, Haiti Children, Klug Properties, Red Brick Center for the Arts, where we sit right now, Picking County Solid Waste Center, White River Overland, and Sundog Athletics. I want to thank those winter underwriters for making these kinds of shows. This week with race director Andrew Bilecki possible. We'll be only away for two minutes. We'll be right back with Andrew, so don't go away. The Mother Load Mercantile, now open at the Pickin County Landfill. I'm so passionate about this community. I absolutely love living here and raising my family here. It gives me a lot of pride to share this with my friends and my clients and help them achieve their, their dreams of owning an Aspen Snowmass and enjoying this incredible lifestyle. White River Overland in Aspen specializes in camper van upfitting, catering to mountain dwellers and outdoor enthusiasts. WRO's builds are purpose-driven to facilitate and enhance skiing, cycling, camping, climbing, and river adventures. More information at whiteriveroverland.com. Providing exceptional service for over 50 years, Aspen Square features studio and larger condominiums for nightly rental with an ideal downtown Aspen location. They offer fully equipped kitchens, wood-burning fireplaces, and private balconies with full hotel-style services and gracious hospitality. 
Aspen Square is proud to support The Local Show. The Red Brick Center for the Arts is Aspen's hub for creative activity, offering youth and adult art classes, community rooms for rent, artist studios, nonprofit offices, lectures, events, and rotating exhibitions with artwork for sale. Come by to connect and be inspired. Learn more at redbrickaspen.com. Sundog Athletics, Aspen's adventure sports school and snowshoeing specialist since 1996, is your opportunity to experience private, all-inclusive snowshoeing, cross-country skiing, and fat biking instructional adventures that will immediately improve your safety, performance, and enjoyment. Like Sundog Athletics on Facebook for fresh updates or explore sundogathletics.com. Support for The Local Show comes from the City of Aspen. The Castle Creek Bridge is nearing the end of its lifespan, and the city is proposing an entirely new bridge as a safe and resilient solution. You can learn more about the bridge construction, transportation options, and in-person and online public events at castlecreekbridge.com. Welcome to We're back here on The Local Show, guys. Thank you for sticking with us. It is the mother of all Ascensions Week, you guys, the 31st annual MOA. And uh, we've got some fun posters we're going to bring up. And over these 31 years, Andrew, I mean, there must be so many countless, like, fond (laughs) memories. Is there a couple highlights that come to mind? I mean, the costume part has to be... The costumes uh, One of your favorite uh, parts, The the costumes are always fantastic. You know, people that put the effort into it and... um, there's a group of ladies out there that uh, every year they put some incredible collection of stuff together. They they dress up as a, the the tea the Highland Tea Party one day. They've done the tenth uh, mountain, tenth mountain mountaineers. Um, it's like Kathy McGowan, you, you know. Kathy yeah, McGowan. Sam yeah, yeah, Lawrence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's and right. And Kathy McGowan. Yeah, and they I see them on the hill. Like a couple of years ago, I was hiking down. I did it every day um, for the. While I was away, I was away for ten years. And Weren't they MAGA back. one year too with the red MAGA hats? Yeah, Make yeah, America yeah. That's great. right. Yeah, they yeah. Did I, one st- year? I, st- I think I still have that picture. That picture might be on the website. I think that actually. picture's yeah. on the website. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Which is what Snowfusion. www.snowfusion.com. Okay. And there's all the information about the event is on the website. So is there like a favorite costume of all those costumes? Because you have a costume competition as a part of the we event did. every year. I liked Flash. Flash showed up one year. He wasn't Flash. as fat. <laughs> he, wasn't, he, wasn't he didn't that necessarily fast. win it. Yeah, but. <laughs> no, but, but it was just, it made me smile. You know, it's like first people would dress up as hot dogs. You know, <laughs> one, one year the Black Swan was the big movie. Oh, yeah, and I yeah. think there was the, the two ballerinas were black and white. That's there right. was. Uh, Oh man, it's so yeah, many. It, yeah, but superheroes usually make a big impact. There know? was a nasty You're, habit up there one year. Nasty habit. Yeah, the mother of all ascensions. Oh. A nasty habit. Like Uh-oh. it was a nun dressed. Oh, okay, <laughs> as, okay, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> a That's nasty awesome. habit. Yeah. That's awesome. So people can go up like well, similar to my canine uphill event. They can go up and just have fun, yep. make it a social uphill. The course is from the new base village. Right, and it's marked at, all it's the marked. way up to High Alpine Restaurant. Yeah. And is it? It's marked today. It's one of the desi- a- it's one of the net designated uphill roads uphill on roads. on um, Snowmass Mountain. No. Okay, so and, um, and kind of give um, kind of give an overview of this year's event. Um, people can sign up. Re- it's online registration only. Okay, um, and we, we started doing that because of COVID a couple of years ago, and we also because of the COVID protocols at the time we changed it. So. We ran the event over nine days in the past. This nice. winter, it's only six days because World Cup's coming to town. Yeah. So we couldn't yeah. use the facilities for the extra time. Um, but it allowed extra people to participate. We doubled the numbers. People were coming up to me after going, hey, this is great. I'm a teacher. I work at the hospital. I, I can't participate at 7 o'clock on a Tuesday morning. And I was still surprised over the years that we've done this how many people would show up then. We've had as many as 300 people Amazing. in the past, back in 2000, show up at this for 7 o'clock in the morning but snowmass it was a mardi gras was a big thing in snowmass then you know they had yeah. the parade on the mall they had uh, four thousand people watching that parade they had the bead toss like you couldn't move in the old days on the snowmass mall and wow. i think that's got diluted now that snowmass base village is got has been built and they bring the concert series in or they have music down there usually and so it's kind of spread out so there's not all that consolidated energy or um, distilled energy in the upper on. village yeah, where it yeah. used to be yeah. so the mother used to kick off fat at, tuesday yeah 
at Mardi the end, Gras. at yeah. the end of the Snowmass Village Mall. It went right. from there. So then when Base Village got developed, we moved it down the mountain. Yeah. You know, and Base Camp Barn Grill came on as a sponsor. Uh, East West Partners did to help. You know, to promote the base village but also yeah. help keep this event alive you know without their support you know it wouldn't be going it's well a, and let's give your major sponsors some love because mm -hmm. you know they're making this event happen mm -hmm. we also have marble distillery right carrie and connie at marble are absolutely incredible i you know i, I get tears in my eyes a lot of times thinking about how generous people have been in this valley yeah. to support this event it's not about yeah. me it's just keeping the event alive i feel like i'm a conduit yeah. that this is coming through me and i can give it to somebody else and something comes through me and goes back to somebody else but the yeah. town of snowmass village every year has you know um wanted wanted to keep this going and with east west partners and um uh, base camp bar and grill in the years past uh the crestwood was a, was a huge sponsor and they still are involved with it but you know jessica Biachi, i was out of the country for a while there and yeah. Jessica helped me coordinate everything boots on the ground down here while I was back up in Canada. You know, and is that the um, Snowmass Resort Association or is that no, the she Snowmass worked, Village uh, she worked government? With, she worked with um, a Crestwood. Oh, she the Crestwood. Was, uh, she okay. was the marketing director okay. for Crestwood. Right. But uh, Rachel Powers, who used to be down at the Snowmass, the Snowmass Club, she stepped in and, and did it. Jackie Stewart, who used to be manage the Cirque and uh, ran Balloon Fest, she, you know, she helped. You know, there was so many people that kept this glued together. Yeah. Um, I went up, I went through a difficult time up up there like I, I lost a partner I um, went through a really dark stage of my life and you know the people of this valley kept me alive yeah. this community you know and when I came back in 217 I was just so happy to be here you know just I, I you know I'd won the lottery you know yeah. and um, I it wanted is. to align with the charity and that's when I reached out to hope because the, what what hope does in this valley I've I've do, I've been involved in that. I've had my own experiences, and we need this charity. We well, let's really talk more about that because that's your main benefactor is the Aspen yeah, Hope Center. Yeah. And as we know, you know, mental health is not only a local issue but a national and worldwide issue. And you're seeing more and more celebrities and athletes come out now and talk about this. To Michael Phelps and on and on it goes. Mm -hmm. Lindsey Vaughn even has talked recently. Yeah. Um, and it's real, and it affects all of us in certain ways, in certain levels, right? So mental, we talk a lot about our physicality, right, and our athletics, but the mental health has to go with that, too. And so let's talk a little bit more about the Aspen Hope Center. Well, and, and just what you're saying about, I don't, th you know, we all, we all have our faces. We all have our masks that we put on, you know, yeah. that we're, we're high energy and we're out there, you know, when you're promoting an event, you're not going to be, you know, you have to be on your game doing what you do. Yeah. Same as you're an athlete and you're competing, you know, and uh, I think sometimes the true, the things that we bury inside of us, you know, there's some darkness sometimes that, you know, we need to address. Yeah. And this valley is such a beautiful place and we think it's, you know, it's it's Pleasantville or yeah. you know Nirvana or, or yeah, yeah, yeah. it's Shangri-La Shangri and it, but there is an undercurrent of drug and alcohol addiction there is uh, there's domestic violence that happens here un unfortunately yeah. there's you know you have just there's just, uh, people that are borderline personality d disorders that are struggling you know with coping with the realities of their life yeah. and hope has these outreach programs they have a hotline that you can c call you know and it was a perfect alignment for the some of the stuff that i went through yeah. and i'm you know i just i want to do more for them you know and yeah. it's i want to see this event hit 40 years and i i want all of the entry fee half the entry fee goes to the hope center I want to see all the entry fee go to the Hope Center, and but I need, I, I need the, the community to keep helping the way that they that they have. Yeah, and, and I believe they will because, yeah. it, like you're expressing, is this community so generous? And this show is a part of raising awareness, mm -hmm. raising funding. You know, we had Susie Kraybach around last week. Mm -hmm. If we can get direct funding from appearances, because some people just don't know. You know, mm -hmm. they need to know. You know, and they and it feels good. That's the other part. You're selfishly when you give, you feel good, right? Whenever I don't, whenever I try to help any of these organizations that I believe in, especially if I've shared some of the issues, 
you know, that they're actually addressing, like mental health issues. You feel good, right, mm -hmm. when you give that way? Mm -hmm. So it's a feel good. And this, this gets people out there into the fresh air, burning off the carbon, you know, like you hike up that mountain, it doesn't matter if you've got something swirling around in your head that's not so positive. Yeah. I'll bet you by the time you get up to High Alpine Restaurant, that thought's gonna be gone because that's what happened to me when I was doing all that running, when I moved from Hawaii or when I was running in Hawaii. Whatever, you got a problem. You start, yeah. you go out and go for a run or bike ride or you get in your canoe, you go fishing or whatever. <sighs> and once you're out there sucking up the sunshine and that fresh air and smelling smelling of clean air and hugging trees, you know, it changes. You come back and it's like that problem really isn't a problem anymore. I've saw, I, yeah. my subconscious solved it. We get in the way, our brains get in the way of letting, you know, what's inside here figure stuff out. You know, just, right. you know, you need to take a break. You just can't keep focusing, playing that same record of negativity over and over and over again. And exercise has been proven in research over and over and over mm -hmm. to affect our mental yeah. outlook. Dopamine it makes us happier, it makes us more positive, it clears our mind. It For me, I can think through things, or like you say, just get out of the way of thought and let the heart proceed mm -hmm. with the proper answer, which is usually in here, not up here yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. in a lot of times. But let's talk about the physical aspect because it's a uphill, how many vertical feet um, is it? 2,073 feet. And what are a couple tips, like say for beginners or first timers going up the hill? Just pace yourself. You know, this um, make it fun. Like it, it, you know, it's there's a couple of steep little sections there. You know, I'm not I'm not gonna blow smoke. <laughs> <when> saying <laughs> that it's coffee pot it, is yeah, not one of yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be easy. You know, but there is a sense of accomplishment when yeah. you get to that final destination. Yes. And um, Treat it like an ex it's an experience. If you want to go hard, you go, go hard. But pack a lunch. Stop halfway up and eat your lunch on the hill and finish if you want. You know, right. if you want, just just get out there and and do it. Yeah. Um, it starts in the base village. You know, goes up. It, it's marked. There's little markers on the course the whole way up. But um, so make pace it a fun yourself. Day. And one of the things in that is start slower than you think. Yeah. Because the start for me on all these uphill races, I've done hundreds of them now. Over, over 30 years, America's uphill is like 37 or 38 years, um, is that start will set up your uphill. If you go nice and slow and warm yourself up, not, I mean, not too slow if you're wanting to be competitive, but not redlining it right away. Mm -hmm. Holding back, gradually clicking up the heart rate. That's one of the most important things because in my years of doing sports, a lot of people will come off that start line going a buck 90, you know, and exactly. you know that they can't run, they're not gonna finish with in a 10K. If you've got 50 guys running a sub five minute 10K, there's not gonna be 50 guys running a sub three minute 10K. <laughs> you, just, <laughs> right. you just know it, you know? So it's- They can uh, maintain. Yeah. And one of the things too, I've always thought in, with my experiences, is I start slow because there's a charge when you pass somebody sometimes, you know, right. that you've caught somebody. And there's, no then you've, you've, as you know, this is an athlete, there's somebody ahead of you. Now go get, get that guy yeah. and then the next guy, you know, but. Uh, Use them as your rabbits. Yeah, yeah, you know, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what it was. It that way. Yeah. Well, we're down to a couple minutes, buddy. So um, the best way to get it, uh, registered is that the Snow Fusion website? Y yeah, okay. www.snowfusion.com. You know, if, if you need to call me, 250-266-0022, you know, um, and leave a message. But all the information's on the website, you know, okay. that people can register there and they'll, you know. People uh, can do it in costume or they can go serious like I try to go serious. You know, I went serious last year. I was really happy with my time. And it, you're right. There's such a – so you're helping a great cause. Yep you know, Aspen Hope Center. You're doing something really healthy for yourself. The reward when you get to the high alpine is awesome. Oh, Hang out and have breakfast. The the other reward is everybody, Not only, they get a great goodie bag, right. but everybody wins a prize. This event oh, is notorious huge. that everybody wins a prize. And huge. like we mentioned earlier, just as a hot, the event started today, but it runs for six days and it finishes at five o'clock on Sunday, the 26th. Okay. So if you've just heard about this now, you can still register and you could still do it at any time in that window. You can re register right up until Sunday, but, but get out there and, and, you know, get some fresh air and uh, well, the support a great cause. And to give people an oh. idea, Andrew, your swag bags are bigger than this and your raffle is known. It's mm -hmm. legendary. 
the epic raffle, the amazing swag bag. Now I did bake you some cookies. Oh my god! So Eric, I'm differentiating this is awesome. my swag bag, <laughs> and you can see I'm into upcycling. I've He's heard about all using these this cookies. apple bag for a greater purpose. Yeah. That's upcycling. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I baked you a dozen cookies. Did thank you have fun you. on the show today? I did. Thank you very much for having me on. I really, really appreciate it. And thank you to the community from the bottom of my heart. You know, I'm so blessed to be back here. I feel you, buddy. Okay. I feel you. Thank you, Thanks, man, man, for all you do, for all you add to our community, your okay. love, your joy, your passion. Really appreciate you. And thank you guys above all for watching this week on The Local Show. Up, See up, you at the away. mother. <laughs> up, up, and away. Woo. Save the Mother Load Mercantile, now open at the Pickin County Landfill. I'm so passionate about this community. I absolutely love living here and raising my family here. It gives me a lot of pride to share this with my friends and my clients and help them achieve their, their dreams of owning an Aspen Snowmass and enjoying this incredible lifestyle. White River Overland in Aspen specializes in camper van upfitting, catering to mountain dwellers and outdoor enthusiasts. WRO's builds are purpose-driven to facilitate and enhance skiing, cycling, camping, climbing, and river adventures. More information at whiteriveroverland.com. Sundog Athletics, Aspen's adventure sports school and snowshoeing specialist since 1996, is your opportunity to experience private, all-inclusive snowshoeing, cross-country skiing, and fat biking instructional adventures that will immediately improve your safety, performance, and enjoyment. Like Sundog Athletics on Facebook for fresh updates or explore sundogathletics.com. Welcome to 